Game sale consoles, not high def DVDs. Let's talk about this for a minute. That's getting into the video has a side video responsibility. Uh, that left a comment on one of my videos about a dope oh, really okay. studio too. Windows hardware. Do I really like? In our last tutorial, <clears throat> we did a DVD case. Simple setup, start to finish. This time around, we're going to build a really simple model to get you started in modeling. Now, we're going to tackle more advanced projects later, but this one we're going to go from start to finish on just straight modeling of a little turret gun. So let me fire up what we're going to model here. I'll fire up Moto. Okay. And let me let's see minus the seat and the little pivot here that the seat goes on is what we're going to build the seat is probably a little advanced for what i'm wanting to show you guys so i'll hide that and this is basically what we're going to build right here okay so let's go ahead close this up and we'll start a completely new scene and as i said in last time I explained how the work plane worked and how I like to start my models and stuff facing the positive X. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to lay down a cylinder. So I'm going to go up here to my basics tab and select cylinder. And I'm going to make sure it has eight sides in one segment. Then I'm going to rotate my 3D view here to my plane snaps flat like that. Okay. I'm going to click once. To get my little crosshair, then I'm going to hold the control key and click and drag. And this is going to give me my um, base for our torque gun. So I'm going to grab my little center asterisk and I'm going to drag up on it to give it some thickness. About like that. I'm going to hit the space bar and drop the tool. Now I'm going to turn on my wireframe because I had it turned off. So you help you guys visualize this better. So now we have this here, so let's select our top polygon, hit the R key, and let's scale it in like that. Okay? Spacebar to drop our tool. Now I'm going to reselect that polygon. I'm going to hit the B key for bevel. Okay? And that's going to activate my tool. And that's going to, well actually that's going to pick up my tool. You know, you can visualize a workbench. You go over, when you hit the B key, um, in theory, you went over to the workbench and picked up the bevel tool. Okay? Now, in order to start using the bevel tool, you're going to have to click in the viewport. So now that I've hit the B key and, and picked up my tool, I'm going to click to turn it on. Okay? So now that my tool is on, I can go to work. So I want to bevel in like this right here. Pretty good little ways, you know. Okay? Then I'm going to shift click, which is going to reactivate my tool. And I'm going to pull it down a little bit. Then I'm going to shift click again, which will again reactivate my tool. And I'll pull it down, and you'll see when I reactivated my tool, it left this line here. Because that's where I reactivated it. So now that I've pulled down a little bit more, I'm going to shift click one more time, pull it down just a little bit, hit the space bar, drop the tool, and now we have this. Okay, but if you hit the tab key and go to sub D mode, it's really not holding all that great. So let's brace it up a little bit. So I'm going to select these two polygons and hit the L key to select my whole loop. Then I'm going to hit alternate or option. C. And that's going to bring up my loop slice tool. I'm going to set it to count of two, mode symmetry. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to click. And you'll see when I click, I get these two little lines here. So I can hold my left mouse button and drag, or I can go up here and use these little interactive tools, kind of like a HUD. And I'm going to put them like that right there, not quite all the way up to the edge, but close, okay? The closer you make it, the sharper the edge will be. And I want a little roundness to it because nothing in nature has truly got a sharp edge on it. Okay? So I'm going to space bar to drop my tool. And now I'm going to do the same thing with this top loop. Select two polygons in the direction I want to select my loop and then hit the L key. Then I'm going to hit alternate or option, whichever, C. And this is if you're on a Mac, okay? And I'm going to click. And we're going to set our loop slices on top here like this. About like that. Okay, now when I go into sub D mode, you'll see that it's holding our shape a lot better. Okay, I'm going to select that middle polygon and go to my polygon tab and select spiky and click once. Okay, and now that will give us that nice pie center. 
Okay, now we have our base. Now we need to make our little feet for our gun to set on. So let's go get a new item, a, a new mesh. Okay. So let's go to our front view here. And I'm going to go to my basic tab and select a square. And I'm going to build just a little square here like this. Go back to perspective by hitting control space and selecting perspective. Okay, now I want to pull this out a little bit. Like so. Maybe make it a little thinner. Okay. I guess that will do. Now we can spacebar to drop the tool. Now let's go in here and brace this up by selecting these two polygons that way and hitting the L key. Then hitting the alternate C and running our two symmetry loop slices right up close like that. Then I'm going to select this way down the outer edge and hit alternate C and click and run me two loop slices that way. Okay. Then I'm going to select straight up like this through the middle and hit alt C and run some loop slices like that and put them close to the edge. Now when I subdivide this you'll see I get a nice smooth rounded square. Okay. So let's go to our front and I'm going to even this up try to get it directly in the center like that okay let's go to our top view and see what we got here let's pull it out like this back to, go back to perspective I'm gonna hit my space bar now I'm gonna select my vert tool and I'm gonna select with my middle mouse button all these verts up here in the corner then I'm gonna hit W and I'm gonna push them back and this is going to give us a kind of a slant to our little stand there. Okay, so let's select our little stand and pull it down like so. Okay, now let's go to our top mode. Let's select just the mesh with our little stand we just made. Okay, and let's make sure we've got it pretty even, at least as even as we can, centered. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the Duplicate tab, and I'm going to select Radial Array. Okay? Now, under Radial Array, I'm going to make the count 4, like that. And I'm going to come over here and click right in the center. And as you can see, that gives us a nice radial array of our stands. And if you want more than four, you can up the count to five, like that. Let's go back to perspective. Spacebar to drop our tool. Now, as you can see what we've got going on here, we have all these nice little stands. So I can go around and double click and select them all. And I'm just going to scoot them down a little bit, like so. Okay, there we go. Now, we might have to adjust them a little bit. We might have to take them close, further out or further back in, but we can do that later manually. So now, let's go ahead and select just this mesh here, and I'm going to select this center pie that we've made. And I'm going to go up to Edit, Copy. Okay? Now I'm going to go over to New Item and select a new mesh. Then I'm going to go to Edit, <coughs> Paste. And that will paste what we just copied right in there. So now I can hit the R key and I can scale this down. About like that right there. Okay. Now we need to give it some thickness. So let's go to our basic tab and grab our thicken tool and click to activate it. And let's give this bad boy some thickness but you'll see it looks like a frisbee. So what we need to do is go in and select two polygons on our edge like this and hit the L key to loop it around. Then we're going to hit alternate C pull up our loop slice and we're going to click and you'll see when we do that that stiffens at our edge okay so now we can grab that whole polygon and move it up to the, to the tops of our stands about like that okay now we have our little torque there with our stands and like I say we might want to raise this up some it's a little low and that's not a problem at all all you have to do is just select them, hit the W key, 
and move them up some. And let's see here. There we go. Now that's a little better. I think I still would like it a little taller. So let's go ahead and do that. Since we got plenty of time to do this. Let's go ahead and select everything. And bring them all up. Like that. Now that's looking a little bit better. Okay. Now we have that. Now we need to build our turret for the actual gun itself. But first, I guess we could build the gun, the uh, barrels. Um, it really doesn't matter however you want to do this. So let's go to our front view. Okay. Let's grab a new mesh. Let's grab our cylinder tool. I'm going to control click like that right there. Go back to my perspective. I'm going to pull this sucker out. Make it a little longer. Okay, I'm going to hit the space bar, drop the tool, select two polygons, hit the L key, and I'm going to run a loop slice. Symmetry. Count of two, right close to the edges, like that. That way, when I subdivide this, it stays fairly cylindrical. I'm going to select that bottom end. Hit the B key for bevel and just click once and that will flatten that out. If it makes you feel better, you can do it on this end too. That's up to you. Okay, so now we got this barrel. So now we're going to use a radial array on it again. So let's try this. Instead of doing it manually, let's try a radial array. We'll do a count of five. Okay. I'm going to click right down there below it like that. That's not too bad, but let's up our count some. Like so. To, I want to up it to they touch. Because this is going to be a sci-fi weapon anyway, so... Let's go back to perspective view. Now we have a nice radial, radial array of some barrels there. Now we might need to shrink these down, <clears throat> which isn't a problem. You know we can do that. You can shrink them down like this and stretch them out like that. Okay, so now let's go back to our front view and let's put a couple little um, braces around this. So we can try a torus. Let's click our torus under our basics tab and I'm gonna control click here. And I'm gonna bring out my torus and I'm gonna go over here to my hole size and I'm gonna up that way up. And as you can see when I do that, that makes my ring a lot smaller. So now that it's small like that, I'm going to hit the space bar to drop the tool. And I'm going to select it, hit the R key, and we're going to scale it down like this. Okay. Roughly put it in place here around our barrels. Okay. Best, just, you know, best you can. This doesn't have to be perfect. This is beginning modeling. Let's go to our perspective view and let's hit the R key for scale and we're going to make this thing a lot wider. Like that. So let's select that. Let's bring it up here. Like so. Let's go to our duplicate tab. We'll select clone. And how many clones do we want? Three of them. And I'll click and I'll pull it down like that. Now we have our basic array of barrel of our barrels. Let's move this back out of the way and we'll use it later. I'm going to rename this to barrel. Okay, I misspelled that I think, but I don't care. So now we got our barrel. We have our turret that the gun sets on, our little stands, and our base. So let's rename that to base. Let's rename this to Stands. And we'll rename this to Torrid. Okay, so here's where we are. Now let's go ahead and make our gun. Okay? So we'll select these inner this inner pie here. And we're gonna go to edit, copy, 
Let's go get a new mesh once again. Edit. Paste. Now, here we go. We got this little pie slab here. So what we need to do is we need to give it some thickness. So first, let's go back into polygon mode. Okay. And raise it up a little bit so I can see what's going on. And I'm going to go to edges and we're going to get rid of these edges here like this. Okay. Let's go to our polygon and let's select our polygon. Let's hit the bevel key for B or B rather. Click to activate it and let's pull it up like this. Okay. Now this gives us a slight little um I guess you could call it depth to our geometry. So let's go to our edge mode and double click this bottom edge and let's hit the P key and fill that in. Okay? And let's select that bottom polygon we just created. Hit the bevel key and click. Now let's bevel it in on the X with the red handle like that. And then before we do anything else we'll pull down with the blue handle. Like so. Now we're kind of getting somewhere. So let's go ahead and brace this up by right, selecting two polygons, hitting the L key, alternate C, count of two, symmetry, and we'll run two like that. And now that's ha helping a little bit. What you need to do is select that bottom polygon there and hit the B key and click just once, and you'll wind up with this shape here. Okay, so let's select it and let's scale this whole thing down a little bit and then we'll move it down like so. Now I'm going to select this bottom polygon, hit the W key and pull it down. Okay, now let's take a look and see what we got here. Okay, let's select this and bring it down like that. Okay, now I'm going to select this loop of polygons by selecting two and hitting the L key, and I'm going to run two loop slices <clears throat> on it. Like so. And if you want to, you can select this bottom edge and get rid of it so it'll kind of have a taper to it. Okay. Okay. So now we got our little turret there. So let's concentrate on it. So let's go back to polygon mode. Okay. I'm going to select this polygon. I'm going to hit the B key. Okay. Now what we're going to do is I'm going to bevel it out, I think. So let's click to select and let's bevel this out like this in the X and pull up just a little bit to give it that little bit of a slant. Then I'm going to shift click pull it up some more like this. Then I'm going to shift click again and bevel it in on the X and pull up a little bit to give it that little bump on this side as well. Like so. Then I'm going to shift click and we're going to bring it all the way up like this. And spacebar drop our tool. So here's what we got. So now we need to go in and brace this up. So let's run our loop slices like we always have before by using the alternate C if I'm going through this fast that's all I'm doing I'm selecting two in the direction I want my loop slices to run and I'll hit alt C and click and it usually saves the setting from before so usually all you have to do is click and hit the space bar okay okay so now we got that let's go ahead and run a couple through here And around the top. Okay, now we got this turret for our gun. So now let's go ahead and work on our top here a little bit. Let's go in here and let's select this and let's bevel this once by hitting the B key and beveling in a little bit like that. Now that helps flatten that edge out a little bit actually helps a lot. And 
And now all I've done is I went in there. Actually, let me back up so you can see me do that. Okay, I'm going to double click this edge. And I'm going to hit the B key to bevel that edge. And I'm going to click. I'm going to up my round level to two or three. And I'm going to pull up on my blue handle. And that's going to bevel that edge in like that. It gives us a nice round edge on top. Let's select our polygon. And actually, I want to run spiky on this polygon. So let's select it. Go to polygon. Tab. Spiky. And run spiky on it. Now I'm going to select these. Hit Alt C. Like so. And I'm going to bring it down to a count of one. And I don't think, as, I, as you can see, my geometry is getting screwed up when I do that. So that's not going to work. So let's go ahead and scale this in, like so. Then I'm going to hit the extrude key. And put a little divot in there like that. And when I say hit extrude, I mean hit the X key. Okay, that's the extrude key. And I'm pull that down like that. And that gives us a little divot in the top there. Okay, now we have our little torque going on here. And I mean, if this is a little too big for your locking, you can always shrink it down. Okay. Like so. Let's go into our right view. Or let's go into our front view. Okay. Now we need to build our place to stick the barrel. So let's go to our basics tab and let's grab a cylinder. Okay, and I'm going to control click a cylinder right there. Like that. Go to perspective view. As you can see what we got here. Let's make this a little bigger. Like so. Now let's select two polygons. Alt C once again and run Our loop slices hit the B key to bevel and now we have this okay but we don't want to go into sub D right now just with that piece so let's go back to polygon mode okay now that we got that let's go ahead and go into our let's see if I can find our left view and we're gonna build another cylinder so let's grab our cylinder and let's control click right here in the middle about that big okay go back to perspective and let's pull this up so we can see it like that. Okay. Now we're going to run our loop slices on this the same way. Okay. And we can subdivide that if you want. And it gives us this nice little shape. So what we're going to do is go back to polygon mode, select our top polygon, hit the B key for bevel. Okay. And I'm going to click and bevel it in on the X like so and pull it up like that okay then I'm gonna shift click again and bevel in just a little bit more shift click and go back shift click go back shift click go back spacebar drop the tool now we have this nice little round deal here okay so now what we need to do is let's select this polygon like this and let's go to edit, copy. We'll get a new mesh. And we'll paste it. I'm going to edit, paste. Okay. And we can select it, hit the R key, and make it a little bigger, like that. Let's run the thicken tool on that so we can thicken it up some, like so. Now let's run some loop slices right along the edge. By hitting alternate C, selecting the loop we want, and hitting alternate C. Okay, now that gives us a nice little circle there. Let's take that. Let's go edit, copy, then go directly back to edit, paste, hit the W key, and you'll see we have a copy made of that. And I'm going to drag that over to the other side, like so. Now we have our side there. Okay. Okay, let's take these in a little bit more. OK, 
Okay. Now, let's go ahead and work on our barrel. As you can see, we've kind of built it in the wrong spot, so we're going to have to do some twisty-twisty on it. So let's rotate it. We'll rotate it minus 90 degrees. Like so. And then we hit the W key, and we're going to pull it over. Let's go to our front view. And let's line this up a little bit here. Okay. Go to our right side here. Now we'll line it up even with this. Looks like it's fitting in there fairly well. Maybe make it a little bigger by hitting the R key and scaling the whole thing up. Okay, let's go ahead and select these top polygons and just bring it up a little. Like so. And you know, to be honest with you, you don't even need these. If you want to go in there and remove them, you can. Like so. But that kind of skewed my... <laughs> Look at there. Look what happened to the middle of it there. Because I had those selected when I pulled it up. So let's go back and fix that. I'll pull it up like that. And we'll go to edges. And we'll remove those edges. Like so. Okay. Now we can select, let's see. We just want to select our gun, our barrel. I want to raise those up some, and I want to raise our barrel up, like so. Now let's raise this up as well. And this to go with it. Shoot those. Okay. Now we can do a couple more little things here for detail. So let's go get a new mesh. Let's go to our front view, side view, it doesn't really matter. Let's select a box. And I'm going to draw a box right like this. Like so. Maybe not quite so wide. Let's bring it up here. That looks okay. Let's go to edge mode. And select that edge. And push it back just a hair. Like so. Now let me select this. And let's put it in a better spot. Maybe we'll go up with it. About right there. So now we want to subdivide this, but first we've got to run our loop slices like before. Running two, count it, a symmetry count of two, up around each side. And don't forget to go long ways like this. Now you can see I have how I have it cut. Okay, select it, hit the tab key, now we have our nice round block there, smooth block. Okay. I just wanted to add a little bevel to the top there so it wouldn't be quite so bubbly. Okay. So, okay, so now we got this. Now that I've added that, let's make it a little taller. Like so. Okay. So let's just select that mesh and let's go to our top view. And once again, we're going to run a radial array. Okay, it looks to be in a pretty good spot already. Okay, so we'll go to Duplicate, Radial Array, and um, this time we'll click right in the middle. 
it runs me a radial array, but I'm going to go to my end angle, and I'm going to put in 180 instead of 360. And that's just going to run it halfway. And now I can bring up my count. I'm going to bring the count up to everything touches. Probably to about 20. That looks pretty good. Running around like that. Spacebar to drop our tool. Now we have our nice little array going around there. Now one last little thing. Let's select this polygon. And let's go to our work plane tab and align our work plane to the selection. Now you can see that aligned that work plane right to that polygon I selected. Now whatever I build, I'm going to build right on that work plane. Okay? So I'm going to go over here to my basic tab, go to my tube tool and select my tube tool. And I'm going to go in here and I'm going to click right there like that. And you can see that put that yellow dot right on that polygon that I had selected. So now I'm going to go up here to my right view, which will give me my top view because of the way the work plane is oriented. And I'm going to click and I'm going to bring it around. The radius is a little big, so I want to bring down the radius like so. See, it gets smaller. And we're going to bring this on around right into here. Now I can go to my mode and say edit. That way I can't accidentally click and add another point. Let's go to perspective. We want to kind of make this look kind of like a cable. Make it droop down like that. So let's go to polygon. Let's double click it. Command C to copy it. Command V to paste it. Let's hit the W key and bring it down. That gives us two. Okay. So now let's select that one and select that one. And let's go up to edit. Cut them out of there. Let's go over to new item and get a new mesh, of course. Go to edit. Paste. And that paste them in there. Okay. So now let's go. Since we got that, let's go up to our work plane and reset the work plane. I'm going to go to my front view, or my right view, so I can see my little cords there. And I'm going to go to Duplicate, Mirror. I'm going to make sure I mirror it on the Z. And I'm going to click. And that's going to mirror those cords right over there. Now if we select everything, you can see we have a nice torque gun ready to upload to whatever you need to use it for. And the good thing about this is, you know, how you can render, you can do turntables and stuff. But the good thing about Moto is, it's easy to export an image sequence or a MOV. Just go up to Render, Render Turntable, which will give you a 360. Or if you had some animation in there, you know, if you went ahead and parented all this together and made it so you can animate it, which wouldn't be a problem wouldn't be too much of a problem. You'd say render animation and you'll see down here save as a movie. It will save it as a, a .mov and you can bring it into motion to composite it into your scene, Final Cut Pro, however you want to work it. So there we go. There's our first basic, very basic modeling tutorial. In our next tutorial we'll get a little bit more advanced, not much. We're gonna take this very slow and incrementally if I use anything like fall-offs and snapping, I will make a video explaining snappings and fall-offs before we get into the modeling section of it. I plan on going over all that. A lot of people ask me, snapping, how snapping work in Moto? I can't get it to work. Well, I'll go over all that for you in due time and in future videos. This was just our next video up from our DVD project. Okay, so let's go to our render tab. See what we got here. Okay, let's go ahead and give it a, a, a ground. So we'll select unit primitives in new mesh plane. It'll give us a little plane there, okay? And I'm going to hit the R key to scale it, and we'll scale it way up. Spacebar drop a tool. Let's go back to our render tab. Now we have a, a ground. Uh, let's go to our environments. Let's just quickly, I'm just doing this cheaply and quickly. Let's go to our outdoor environments, and let's load in. I don't know, this looks good here. This outdoor probe number eight. Okay, I'll load that in like that. Now you can see we have that back there. It don't look like much. What can we do with that, you know? But just real quickly.
I'll make this into something we can use. Now we have this plane. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my materials. Okay. Under materials, there's a studio material tab. So I'm going to go over here and select my plane, my flat plane. And I'm going to go down to something called shadow catcher. I'm going to drag that shadow catcher on top of that plane. Now, as you can see up here in my preview, you know, we can, of course, you would want to, this is just quickly, cheaply done, okay? The scale is kind of small and all that good stuff, but I think you get the basic point. Um, if we go into back to our environments, we can add an outdoor environment. Let's try. Let's see here. There we go. Now we're in the desert here. I don't have global illuminations on or nothing like that. I just wanted to set this up real quick. You know, there's global illuminations, and I have nothing in my environment set. Nothing like that. So, anyways. There's our turret, our gun. Okay. I hope you all enjoyed this beginner's modeling tutorial. I really do. Um, I hope you find some use for it. Now you can see our gun is kind of setting in the desert there. There, that's looking pretty good. Now if we went in and textured that, we'd have us a desert machine turret there, which would be good for really anything, especially a game engine, you know. So let's see what we got here. Let's do a real quick render. Now I haven't textured this or given any kind of material or anything like that. Haven't haven't monkeyed with the samples or the lights. Haven't monkeyed with any global illumination settings. This is just a really quick render done inside Modo of our first modeling tutorial. I really hope you guys have learned something. Um, if you don't enjoy these Moto tutorials, let me know. But I have a few people out there that really enjoy them, so if, if you're not one to get into it, that's okay. But um, I hope that these maybe translate into other packages as well. If you use Cheetah or Silo or Blender, you know, the modeling is kind of universal. Just take your time and watch how I model it, and you can probably model this in any package. It don't have to be Moto. Um, Moto 401 will have a free trial up soon. Um, since they've switched to Moto 401, they haven't had the trial, but they're working on it and they're going to get it up. So eventually you'll be able to um, follow along using Moto with a 30-day trial. Um, but for now, go get Blender and try to model along with me using Blender. Or go get Cheetah 3D if you're a Mac user. Or Silo. Silo is a great 3D modeling program. Um, or if you're a 3DS Max user or a Houdini user or a, a Maya user. I'm sure you can figure a way to get it all to translate. So... Um, Thanks for watching, guys, and uh, we'll see you guys in the next tutorial.